Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So this side Priya Bhatia, and in this video we will be talking about the functions in Python. I hope that until so far you are following my Python playlist, and in the very last session we have talked about how we can do the implementation of loops in Python and what is the major utility of the loops that we have, right? I hope that all the sessions are very amazing and you you are really enjoying the complete playlist that I have organized. Now. In this session, we will have a all-around discussion about the functions. What is function? Why is that required? How we can do the practical demonstration of the functions in Python? With the help of one example, I am trying to explain to you the complete concept. And at the very end, I'll give you the practice problems. Please make sure that you will do the practice problems as well. Apart from this, I am conducting the quiz questions on my community post. So if you haven't checked it yet, please go and check it out and participate in that as well, which will really help you to enhance the concepts with respect to this playlist that we are covering up. So please make sure that you will watch this video till the very end so that you will be able to get amazing insights about this session as well. And do hit like button, share this video with everyone, subscribe to my channel. It would really means a lot to me. All my hard work will be paid off if you will, uh, you know, share these videos and, you know, subscribe to my channel as well. So without wasting any time, uh, let's get started and we'll try to understand now the concept of functions in Python. Whenever we are talking about functions in Python, First thing that we need to understand is what is the literal meaning of functions and why it is required, right? So basically you can say that functions are nothing but is a code block, a logical code block, which is basically trying to solve some specific task, right? So you can say it as a block of code, block of code that performs a specific task. Now, I know that uh, just by definition, you will not be able to understand. I'll give you the practical real-time example as well. Uh, that performs a specific task. Now, the question you can ask from me or which you can, uh, uh, you know, have which, which you can have is that why is that required? Okay, we understood. What is function? But why is that required? As I always say that first of all, whenever we are trying to learn something new, first thing is what is that thing all about? Once you understand what is the function. So what I said, it's a block of code. For example, if let's say uh, you want to perform some task in a given problem. If you are following my playlist of Python programming, you remember, right? In the last live session, what I have talked about I have talked about that how we can do the reversal in a list at the very end of the session. I have talked about how we can do a reversal in a list using two pointers approach. So in the session of looping, which was the last session, live session was there. I have explained in a pretty much great manner that how basically we will be able to do a reversal of a list of an array using a two pointer approach. Now, if you remember while making any sort of explanation in the last session, I haven't used the functions, right? I have just explained you the direct logic and we'll try I have tried to implement that. But let's say this is the thing that you want to achieve, which is the reversal. And I'm saying that at every point of time, I will keep on changing this list. What I'm saying is, let's say at every iteration, I will keep on changing this list. So the one way is that you will at every point of time for individual list apply this reversal operation via two pointer approach. So for those who are not aware about what I'm saying here, I would suggest please refer the last session in the playlist, which is about mastering loops in Python that I have conducted live. So those who are following my playlist, they know what I'm saying here. For those who are feeling like it's something new, please refer the last session, you will be able to get my point. So what I'm saying is, for every new list, one way is that you will apply that reversal approach again and again, which is a very bad habit, right? What you can do is the list might get changed, but reversal operation will remain same because the logic of applying this reversal will remain same. So what you will say is that why not to apply a function for that, which is a different 
sort of function all together whose major task is to perform the reversal so what is the logic what, what, whatever be the, be the logic of reversal i am writing in that specific function and now if i change list 1 list 2 list 3 list 4 i just have to pass that reversal inside that parameter as a list 1 list 2 list 3 whichever list i want the reversal operation to be done right this is the simple idea behind the function so when i am whenever i am saying that why is that required or whenever some interviewer will asking will be asking from you that what's the basic need to use functions in a, a code so your answer should be that what we want is we want to use reuse that code re reusability of the code of the logic which is required and whenever we want to reuse any code and whenever we want to reuse any logic in that particular scenario it's very very important that we should go for functions rather than applying the same lines of code again and again i hope it makes sense to everyone right now you will observe that in python whenever we are defining any function we are defining by the def keyword so this is a keyword specifically in python programming language right which basically states that okay now our function definition is being started for example to define a function to define a function don't worry i will share all the notes so uh, you just have to focus on the session so what i'm saying is for example let's say we want to do a reversal operation so what you will say you will say def you will write the function name reverse inside that you will you will write the list for which you want the reversal operation to be done and then maybe list one is there or list two is there whatever be the parameter you can apply then you can write here the statements the logic of doing the reversal and finally you will return the list one so this contains the logic of doing a reversal of a list that's how the complete function in python will be defined don't worry i will show you practically as well right now this kind of function which you are defining via def keyword at each and every point of time whether you are writing any uh, code in a complete uh, data science pipeline also whenever we will try to write a uh, different different modules you will see that there uh, at every module we are trying to create a separate separate function for data ingestion for uh, you know uh, data modeling for data uh, you can say training right uh, deployment so for every particular module what we are trying to conduct is the definition for that so that we, whenever we need, need that particular portion we can just directly call the function name okay so this is something that we call as user defined function because a user is defining right user defined function so any function which is we are defining as a developer uh, where we are starting with the def keyword is something that we call as a user defined function and you will observe that we will be having two different kinds of functions in python specifically when i am talking about a uh, user defined it's a def based keyword function and then the second one is something which you can say is built in functions in python so we have built in functions also in python what is the meaning of built in functions for example you must have observed that in the last sessions when i was conducting the python programming playlist uh, live sessions which you will observe in the starting of the sessions we're talking about type type function which is basically giving us the data type of a variable that we're trying to achieve so basically to talk about the data type of a variable whether it's an integer or a string or a boolean or a complex and so on so basically data type of a variable is given by type function similarly len function which is basically tells us the size of the list that we are having or the tuple so basically uh, similarly, we're talking about the print function, which is basically used to print the data, right, in Python, and many more. So basically, we will observe it's not the limited. We have many many functions that are already built-in functions. What is the meaning of built-in functions? The functions which we are not defining, but it is already being defined in the programming language itself. We just have to use them. To get the output to get our job done 
and what's the beauty about python programming language that it contains a lot many built in functions right which we can directly use to uh, get our task done make sense now let's move ahead and whatever things i have talked about just now let me try to show you the implementation for the same so if you remember or if you can refer the last session of going towards the uh, you know reversal operation so i'll try to do the same thing here so let's say we will be having a list let me again just rewind you what we have discussed in the last session let's say we will be having a list which contains numbers like 2 7 9 12 and 10 obviously the index number will be 0 1 2 3 and 4 what i want is i want to do a reversal operation of this particular list now with the help of a function so what i want is i want to achieve the output as 10 12 9 7 and 2 the index number is 0 1 2 3 4 right so in a way we will be having five number of elements in the given list so this is what we want to achieve as a outcome what i can do here as i already explained you we will take our low variable which is responsible to contain the lowest index we will take the high variable which is responsible to contain the higher index now what we will do we will apply one simple while loop now we already know how basically the while loop will work we'll apply one condition that until my low value is less than high do one thing what is that thing but now what i will do is i'll do everything inside the function so i'll define the function def reverse inside this i'll take the parameter as list one which i am passing and now what i will do is i'll just do the same task that is first task what i will do i'll swap the values of list one of low with with list one of high this is the first task which i will do once this task is done meaning the value of uh, if you will observe list one of low so this is let's say list one so the value of list one of low is two list one of high is 10 so 10 will go here two will come here now what will happen the second step will be obviously you have to do the same task for the entire array that you have for the entire list that you have so you will increment the value of low you will decrement the value of high so now what will happen what i am saying is you will increment the value of low by one you will decrement the value of high by one right so basically again the same step you will again repeat because now again low value is less than high so you will 12 will go here 7 will come here again what will happen second and third step will be increment the value of low decrement the value of high now your low and the value of high is same right that's where your condition of a while loop will get false right will get false so the statements which are running internally the three steps swapping incrementing the low decrementing the high will see, will get stopped here and finally you can return the list one which is the updated one which contains the reversal operation which contains the reversal array that's what we will try to achieve and because here what we are doing is we are trying to iterate over the complete list that we have which depends on the size of the array so if someone will ask you about the time complexity part i hope everyone can tell me that it will be nothing but is equals to big of n so complexity wise the code will remain same just like the way i have explained in the last session but the only thing which i'm trying to convey here with this session is that how basically in python we can define a function that's the simple target we want to achieve in this particular session so basically let me first of all try to define the driver code here driver code is the code where i'll take the input values let's say list one now what will happen is i'll take the numbers like uh, 2 5 7 12 and 10 okay now what i want is i want to print the reverse of this list one so i will pass this particular so that is something which you can say is the function calling that is something which you can say is the function calling right where if you will observe we are calling our function obviously when we are calling our function we need to define that function so let's talk about the function definition function definition where we can say def reverse inside that we are passing the list one as the parameter this is something that we call as a parameter doesn't matter whatever parameter you will you will write here 
what it indicates that okay this reverse function is taking some sort of a list as an input now what we have to do we have to define the value of low and the value of high which is equals to zero index as the value of low and the value of high will be what is the length of the list one minus one because the last index is the n minus one now what we can do we can apply one while loop where we are saying until the value of low is less than high do one thing what is the first thing that we have discussed we need to swap the values of list one of low with list one of high right so what we can do here we can say list one of low comma list one of high is equal to list one of high comma list one of low done what is the second step once that task is done we have to do the same task for the upcoming elements for that we need to increment the second step is to increment the value of low pointer the value of low pointer so low will become low plus one third step is to decrement decrement the value of high pointer meaning high value will become high minus one and finally what we can do we can return this list one as the final result so this is how the complete reversal will happen and here this approach is somewhere famous by the name of two pointers approach that's what we have discussed right and whenever we're talking about the time complexity as we are iterating towards the complete array that we have which depends on the size of the element so we are applying one single while loop it will be bigger of n if we're talking about a space complexity uh so we are not taking any extra space so it will be constant to know more about how basically we will be able to find the time and the space complexity, please refer my DSA using Python playlist. You will be easily able to get the concept behind calculating, calculating the time and the space complexity part pretty well. Let me try to run this code now. Let's see what we will be able to get as an output. Can you see? We are getting a list. As you can see by its bracket itself, the output will be 10, 12, 7, 5, and 2. That's what uh, we actually required, right? So it means that this code is working perfectly fine. So that's the overall idea behind how we can define uh, functions in Python. What is the meaning of a function? Why it is required? And uh, after that, we have discussed that how basically the two pointers approach, the same question that we have discussed in our last session can be implemented via the approach of a functions practically, right? Now, as I always give you uh, at the end of the session, few practice questions. So for today's session, the practice question will be, first of all, you need to create a function which accepts a list of numbers and returns the sum of all even numbers in a list. For example, you can clearly see here, right? Let's say I am giving, I am giving uh, you a list of 2589. So first of all, in this given list, your code, your function will be able to detect which numbers are even. So 2 and 8 are even. So it will just add those numbers and return me the answer as 10. The second important question which I have given you is make sure that you will apply a function here. You will create a separate function here. Similarly, you need to create a function to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. I have already explained what this Fibonacci sequence is all about. For the value of 0, the answer will be 0. For the value of 1, the answer will be 1. I hope you all are aware about that because we already had a great discussion in the last sessions about this Fibonacci sequence. So what I am saying is, you know, fib of 0 is 0, right? You know, fib of 1 is 1. You know, fib of 2 is the addition of the previous two numbers, which is 0 plus 1. So the answer will be 1. Fib of 3 is again the addition of previous two numbers, which is 1 plus 1, 2, right? Fib of 4 is the addition of again the previous two numbers, which is 3. Fib of 5 is the addition of the previous two numbers, which is fib of 4 plus fib of 3. The answer will be 5. So that's why if you will observe, I have mentioned the direct answer as 5. So that's what I want, but as a function now. Means you need to create def Fibonacci inside that. Then you will pass the parameter as n, and then you have to define your method, right? Here, why it is important to define a function? I hope you got my point. For example, now let's say if I'll change my list one, I want to apply the same thing on the list two. 
and my list two contains three, five, seven, six, one, these elements. Now I don't need to define again the reversal logic. What I have to do, I have made only a single change by changing the list one to list two. And if I'll again run this code, you will observe that we will be able to get the reversal of the list two. Similarly, be it any list will come now in future. What thing I have to change just now? In the function calling, I, had, I just have to change the parameter. Accordingly, my answer will get changed. So overall logic of reversal will be same. Just the parameter will get changed and we will be able to get the answer. So the major utility is that we will be able to reuse the logic of reversal in any of the given list entered by the user. Entered by the user. And that's the major application of using the functions in your code. I hope you got my point, what I'm trying to convey here. Right? With this, let's end today's video. I hope that you find today's video insightful. If you do, please hit like button. Share this video with everyone. It would really means a lot to me. Right? Uh, and I'll see you all very soon in the upcoming video where now we will discuss further concepts in the Python programming playlist. I hope you are enjoying it a lot. Bye-bye everyone and see ya.